God, come to my assistance. Lord, make make haste haste to help help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Welcome to the God Minute. This is Marian Saturday. So by now, you're probably familiar with Saturdays at the God Minute being Marian Saturday. But why Saturdays? Well, Saturdays in the Catholic Church are set aside specially to honor Mary. And today, we're going to talk about why. Thanks for praying with us. Saturday has been traditionally dedicated to Our Lady since around the beginning of the 10th century. I read an article by Professor Plinio Correa de Oliveira that talks about why, and I'd like to share some of his thoughts with you today. The Gospels tell us that after the death of our Lord, the apostles, disciples, and holy women did not believe in the resurrection even though our Lord had predicted it various times. They didn't lose faith in Jesus, they just lost faith in a resurrection because they didn't fully comprehend it. Professor Plinio says, Indeed, a resurrection is such an extraordinary thing, so opposed to the natural order, that the human mind is not inclined to believe it. Even though our Lord had raised Lazarus from death, and they witnessed that, they did not realize that the one who had resurrected Lazarus could resurrect himself. How can a man through his own power rise from the deep abyss of death and say to his own soul, now re-enter your body and be one with it? This demands a much greater power than the one needed to resurrect a dead man a thing, normally speaking, that the human mind cannot imagine. While the disciples couldn't see a way out of this, Our Lady knew and trusted that Jesus would rise from death. Even though they had a supernatural instinct telling them that the history of our Lord had not yet ended and that a final word remained to be said, it was only the presence of Our Lady that confirmed them in this instinct. Not only this, but sacred tradition tells us that those who surrounded Our Lady at the foot of the cross, St. John, the Holy Women, and a few others like Nicodemus, then accompanied her back to her house after the laying in the tomb. In other words, it is likely that without Our Lady, they would have dispersed completely. From the hour that our Lord died on the cross on Good Friday until the Sunday of the resurrection, only Our Lady believed in his divinity and ability to conquer death, and therefore only she had perfect faith. For as St. Paul says, without the resurrection our faith would be in vain. On that holy Saturday, therefore, on the whole earth, only she personified the Catholic Church. Only she had the full faith. She was the only creature with the complete faith, a most perfect faith without any shadow of doubt. What an incredible and beautiful thought. 
And you know what makes this even more profound? Is that this was her first act as our mother. It was on Good Friday that Jesus entrusted humankind to Mary. And the very first thing she does as the mother of all is single-handedly keep the light of faith alive for us to carry the entirety of her human sons and daughters in, in the act of faith preservation. Our Blessed Mother single-handedly represented our church for all of us that day. She loves us so much. Just as God has given Mary the grace to be the single upholder of the church on this first Holy Saturday, so too has he given her the grace to be the upholder of our church now in the era of the resurrection. It was because of her that our church was sustained until Easter Sunday. And it is because of her that our church continues to be preserved and fortified. And so because of this, the church has come to honor her every Saturday in remembrance of and thanksgiving for her remarkable faith, both in her son and in his body, the church here on earth. May we hold fast to these Saturdays and always honor her in her rightful role as Queen Mother. We are reminded of our own lack of faith, just like the other disciples. But we need not be ashamed we simply turn to our mother in humility and entrust our faith journey to her. Even on the day when death was thought to have won, Mary's faith reminds us that life will triumph. Even in a church full of sinners and doubters, Mary's unwavering faith reminds us that the gates of hell will not prevail. Even in a heart that struggles to believe, Mary's faith serves as a life preserver, thrown out to us, reminding us that the resurrected Lord has won for us eternal life. Let us glorify our Savior who chose the Virgin Mary for his mother, confident that he will hear us. We ask, May your mother intercede for us, Lord. Eternal Word, you taught your mother Mary to choose the path that was best. Let us follow her example and hunger for the food of everlasting life. May your mother intercede for us, Lord. Calling to mind all of our intentions, together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Virgin Mary, there has not risen in the world among women one similar to thee, blooming as the rose, fragrant as the lily. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. O Sacred Virgin, hear the song of my praise. We beseech thee, O Lord, that the heavenly intercession of the ever-glorious and blessed Virgin Mary may protect us and conduct us to eternal life through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God watch over and protect us in blessing this day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Before we go... I'd like to ask for special prayers for my little sister as she and her husband were married yesterday. So prayers for them and all the other newlyweds in our TGM prayer family 
as they begin their married life. Have a blessed day, everyone. We'll see you tomorrow. Oh